Welcome aboard to the flight of the Phoenix. My name is Barry, and I'm currently climbing through about five and a half thousand feet north of Carnarvon, heading up to the Exmouth Peninsula. And hopefully, in about a uh, little over two hours' time, there will be a total eclipse of the sun. The eclipse is going to just touch the Exmouth Peninsula. Uh, unfortunately, or the challenge for me is the Exmouth Peninsula is as far as you can travel from my home base in Melbourne. I keep the glider in, in uh, Benalla, about two and a half hours north of Melbourne. So my plan for today is climb up to about 10,000 feet and get ready. With about an hour to go, I'm going to slowly climb up to hopefully about 14,000 feet. I have an oxygen system here. And uh, then hold at 14,000 feet, probably just southwest of Exmouth, the Exmouth Peninsula. Um, at 14,000 feet, and as the eclipse comes through, I believe, I hope, I think, at that height, I should be able to pick up and see the shadow come travelling across the Indian Ocean. I'll go into totality. I think I'll see the shadow run across the Exmouth Peninsula, and then we've got about a minute and three seconds of totality where we'll see the, the ring of solar flares out around the sun uh, in a minute of totality before I should see the sun return coming across the ocean. Uh, I'll go back into early daylight and the shadow will move across the, will depart to the north, northeast actually. Uh, Carnarvon is my base for this trip. Uh, it's a bloody long way from Melbourne, about 19 and a half hours of flying done over four days with uh, two days waiting out some weather in South Australia. Uh, flying, uh, yeah, across the Nullarbor, which was a, a big day, seven and a half hours to cross the Nullarbor. But the Phoenix has handled it beautifully. Uh, the autopilot's helped me a lot of the way. I've been able to eat my lunch on the way and, and look after things and keep things going. Uh, stopping at some really interesting places for fuel uh, and meals, of course, along the way. Everyone's been very friendly and helpful. Uh, but today's the big one. Uh, heading up north, and uh, I think soon the eclipse will start. We'll start to see a little bit of uh, shadow. I've got my, my dark viewing goggles or, or cards to be able to look at the sun and see that the eclipse start um, reasonably soon, although there won't be anything visible to us for, for a little while. I'm heading north uh, across all the sand dunes and, and uh, the beautiful coast, I'm told. Haven't seen it yet, but uh, yeah, the coral coast along here of uh, lots of coral keys and uh, just up here is Nigaloo where they have the, the whale sharks and, uh, and some great diving, I believe. So should be a good view from the air, but really today is all about total eclipse of the sun, about two hours to go. Here's hoping. So it's now uh, 10.30 in the morning local time. I'm still sitting at 9,000 feet, just waiting a little longer before I climb up just to save fuel and oxygen, although I don't think either are a big complaint. Um, I've got a, an hour to climb. Really surprised how little traffic there is in the neighbourhood. Hardly heard anyone. Um, the, the moon is now about 30% of the way, a third of the way across the face of the sun. Uh, I can't successfully take pictures of it, so I'll, I'll steal other people's photos for, to give you an indication of that. Uh, I'm now tracking out to the west-ish, northwest, so that's the Nigaloo Peninsula over there, um, and the Exmouth, the whole Exmouth Peninsula, the town of Exmouth and the Learmont um, RAAF base over there, and up off the wing there's all the sand dunes and reefs running up to the north. Looks very nice. That's the update. 30, uh, one hour to go. With about 30 minutes to go, I would comfortably climbed up to 14,000 feet. Glider was behaving beautifully and the sun was definitely fading away. Your eyes adjust and the cameras adjust, so it's really hard to get a perspective of just how much of the intensity of the sun was gone. But it was clearly getting colder and darker 
and uh, I was up in position ready for the eclipse to come through. Okay, so I am right on the line now. I'm just a little bit under 14,000 feet. The sun is rapidly losing its oomph. There's not much left of it. Uh, so I am sitting about 14,000 feet. Uh, I'm going to speed up a bit. A bit more power. Um, just get a little bit more speed to be a bit more stable. So really she's only burning 12 litres an hour, holding at 50, 60 knots, 55 knots. I'll speed up a bit and give it a little bit more power as the, as the show comes. Uh, 3.21, so 7 minutes. It, yeah, it's getting darker. So let's see how the autopilot behaves at this altitude. Seems pretty good. So I've got my... Oh wow, it's getting thin. It's getting thin. There ain't much sun there. Oh wow. So somewhere out there the shadow's coming. What have we got? 23... 5 minutes to show time. Going to re-engage the uh, autopilot, make sure it's stable. I think it's safer flying through the eclipse than I am. It won't be distracted. It is getting darker. It's getting colder, although at this height um, I'm above the freezing level anyway. So, but uh, yeah, the radiant heat is absolutely gone. What's the time? Four minutes to go. Um, Oh, am I kidding myself? No, it is darker out that way. It is darker out the direction it's coming from. The sun is fading very fast, the tiniest of sliver left. Um, all the radiant heat gone from the sun. Absolutely, you can feel the radiant heat's gone. Autopilot's holding me at 65 knots. I checked my oxygen before, the oxygen's puffing away, there's plenty in the bottle. So it's going to be coming in from that direction. Uh, over this way you can see the clouds are getting a bit darker, it's definitely darker on the ground. Uh, 25, 3 minutes to go. So somewhere out there coming at a thousand miles an hour is the shadow. I can see the sun up to my left and I can see where the shadow is coming from. So I'm exactly at 90 degrees to the line. Just make sure I get some oxygen. The plane's flying itself nicely. 64 knots, 14 litres an hour, maintaining 1,000. Sorry, 14,100. Unbelievable. I can I can see it going dark out there. Uh, time is 26. Two minutes to go. It's definitely darker to the right than it is to the left. The auto exposure on the camera will probably override that. Um, but definitely darker out to the right. I'm going to turn the autopilot off, have a little bit of a look around in the direction it's coming from. And at this point I lost the audio file so I'll have to go to a voice over here. The sun's fading very quickly. The last few seconds it, it, it go, the sun goes in about three seconds. You can see the light's still down on the Ningaloo Peninsula below. And here we go, the sun drops into darkness. The camera's adjusting all the time, but you can see it on the wings of the dashboard. The shadows are gone, and there we go, we're in full eclipse. You can see the shadows starting to progress across the ground peninsula, but off in the distance on the mainland, straight ahead in the clouds, the sun's still shining. Uh, up the end of the peninsula, north, up past the wing there, the, uh, the sun's still shining on the far end of the Exmouth Peninsula as the shadow progresses up across the peninsula underneath where we're in full totality here. The, meanwhile up above uh, the stars had come out you could see I think it was Jupiter uh, very clearly very close to the Sun. Up this high I had a lot more light than the people on the ground. 
and so I didn't see as many stars but uh, there were certainly some stars becoming visible. Then as quickly as it arrived, the uh, sun, uh, as totality arrived, the sun came back out and there in a matter of seconds it went from being dark, clearly seeing all the, the solar flares around the sun and being comfortably able to look at it. Then within a couple of seconds uh, it had come back and really wasn't possible to look at it directly again. As I came back into sunlight, then the sand dunes down below me were starting to also come back into light. The ones on the right there, you can see the sun's back. But the far end of the peninsula is still in, in totality. So the shadow fairly slowly progresses. It takes about another minute or two before the shadow's made its, uh, was passed all the way off the end of the peninsula. But down the sand dunes there in front are uh, quite quickly coming back into light. Once again, all offset by the adjustment of the camera. But those sand dunes are coming back into light and the shadows moving up across the peninsula. And uh, well and truly back in the light where I am and the shadow clearly progressing up along the peninsula. bit of warmth coming back in the sun and there you can clearly see the, the, the sun's back in front but up the other end of the peninsula it's, uh, it's running away fairly quickly. The best way to get an idea of how the whole shadow progressed across and the eclipse unfolded is to probably run it in a time lapse so I've got a rapid speed up of the whole event here and probably the most dramatic way to get an idea of how that shadow came overhead and uh, progressed up across the peninsula. My aim with the eclipse was to get as high as I could so I could look down on the shadow but the Bureau of Meteorology satellites obviously do a better job than that and the sequence they captured of the eclipse passing across the top left corner of Australia is really stunning. What it does show very clearly is how dark the shadow is. When you're sitting in the middle of it, your eyes and your cameras adjust to the darkness and you don't get the relative indication that you do in this satellite photo of just how broad and dark the shadow really is as it moves across.